Good afternoon. I'm not used to being tethered to a podium or a mic, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, I'm going to be pretty loud, uh, but I like to move around. Uh, the first thing, before I get into my remarks, I was thinking this morning about what I would say here. But I have to be honest, when I got here this morning, and many of you may have not been here this morning, so let me paint a picture for you really quick. When I parked across the street, there was a sea of school buses, like I was in some sort of school bus yard. But when I looked at all the names of the dozens and dozens of school buses, I could see all the different counties and school districts from around the state. And then when I walked into the stadium uh, arena today and I came up through the back and I looked out, this place was packed. Thousands upon thousands of high school students from around this state were here to engage about this problem, this academic, this crisis that we face today. How often do you see children engaging in, in something like that when it does not relate it to Snapchat or to Facebook? And these kids were engaged. They were excited, they were shouting, they were screaming. The energy was totally electric and it really, it really changed me. Hearing a lot of the stories today really changed a lot of what I wanted to talk about. But I have to first say thank you to Senator Mike Lee and his vision for this. I told him earlier that I believe that this should be in every arena across this country. And the, the great people in this state of Utah that have put this together from the AG, Sean Reyes, and the local DEA, Brian Besser. What an amazing job. So I just want you to know the energy in here this morning was electric, and we must continue that. So if, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Yes. It's not just Senator Lee's and the Attorney General's and the DEA's responsibility to continue it. It's all of our responsibility to continue it. So I appreciate you engaging with that. And so for me, this started a couple months ago. I was actually in the Attorney General's office here, and he got a shipment of, of hats in. And it's the hat I'm wearing right now. And when I looked at the hat, I said to him, hey, that's a pretty powerful thing. What does instead mean? I like that. And if you know me, you know that every day I wear the same outfit, the same color pants, the same exact shoes, the same t-shirt, seven days a week. And I wear the same hat, probably have 20 copies of the same hat. But for the first time in a long time, when I saw that word instead, it was so powerful, I asked the Attorney General, A, can I have the hat? And when he explained to me what was going on here today, I said, I got to be involved. And so thanks to Sean Reyes for inviting me, thanks for the hat that I've been rocking around the United States as I travel and engaging with technology leaders from Silicon Valley and across this land to understand about how we in the technology industry can do better, that we can do better to help, the technology that's available today and that's coming available, it's so powerful. And we use it for so many different things, but we should be using it to eradicate the opioid epidemic. And so, <clears throat> this is super powerful and meaningful to me in the sense that someone very close to me, like a lot of the stories you've heard today, had to be resuscitated multiple times and brought back from the opioids. Now this was before we knew we had an opioid crisis. This is before when people were talking about it. But that experience shaped me and it has motivated me. You know, about eight years ago I started this company, Banjo, in Silicon Valley. And I'm not your average tech guy out of Silicon Valley. In fact, before I was in Silicon Valley, I was in law enforcement and I did two tours of duty in war in the military, but I knew, thank you very much. <clears throat> but when I first invented this technology, which has become one of the leading artificial intelligence company in the world, I knew it had a greater purpose. And today at Banjo, there's a lot of ways, like other tech companies, that we could be focused in areas that are quite honestly easy uh, to make money, easy for us to succeed. But when you see what this technology and other technologies around us can do, I'm calling on all of us technical leaders to be more altruistic with our technology and to help, not just with the opioid crisis, but in all the human crises. Because we have the, one of the greatest abilities to make the difference. And we need to stand up and to do our part. And so today, 
as you heard before, I've moved the headquarters of our company to Utah. Why? Well, Utah, as you know, is leading here in the opioid crisis, leading, showing leadership with Senator Lee and putting together a conference, but also, unfortunately, leading on the bad side of it with the opioid epidemic. And we have to make a difference. And I've challenged my company that we will use our artificial intelligence and the power that we have only, to, only for good. We are on a mission. Our company's mission is to save human life and to reduce suffering, period. If our technology is not being used for that, we will not use it, regardless of the money, regardless of any of the good that could come out of it, it has to be used for saving human life. We have to make the difference. And there are other companies besides us who are making a difference. There are other companies who are dedicated, not just to the opioid crisis, but to making good. Here, you guys know you have a great company called Pluralsight. And with Pluralsight One, teaching young people and giving them skills so as they come up, they can focus and lead a path another choice instead of going down one road instead they can choose another social media companies like Facebook get beat up a lot and for sometimes there's a good reason but Facebook is doing a lot of good around the opioid crisis and has a program to try to curb and, and understand when it's being talked about and where the problem is and sharing that companies like Microsoft are using the power of their cloud technology with partnerships in order to help understand where drugs are being overprescribed. And so I want to thank those leaders and those companies, and I want to thank all the employees in my company who've come along on this mission with me to help eradicate this problem. Many of you have heard today, and many of you missed this morning, the powerful speakers who've all experienced a tragedy and a problem with the opioid crisis. Many of you in this audience, I, can, I assure you, your neighbors to your left or to your right have experienced the pain of what this epidemic has caused. And the other day, I happened to be at a barbecue here in Utah. I'm not the most social person in the world. In fact, I usually hide behind the scenes, pretty much like I have the company's name, Banjo, hidden behind my beard. But at this meeting, there were rock stars, movie stars, sports stars, so I already felt out of place and I wanted to get out of there. But I found myself staying till the end of the event, which is rare, and I'm glad I did. Because what I heard there will stick with me for the rest of my life, but also has motivated not only myself, but motivates my team and the growing team that we continue to hire throughout Utah to help eradicate the opioid epidemic. And in that meeting, I met this gentleman, and he came up to me, and I actually thought he was a movie star, and I didn't know who he was, and I was sort of embarrassed. And he started talking about his son, and he had a picture of his son, and he was so proud of him, and he was talking about him. And the, his son was in his 20s, and then he told me that his son had died recently of an opioid overdose. And he told me that his neighbors, his friends, his work colleagues, everybody said, wait a minute. Your son was a junkie? Your son was on drugs? That doesn't make any sense. And he said to me, what does someone on opioids look like? And again, he showed me the picture of his son, who I can tell you was a handsome young man, successful in his work, successful in his family life. And he said, he looks like me, he looks like you, he looks like all of us. There's not a stereotype and we cannot stereotype. We have to come together as a community and help those in need. And those that are in need, and I know there are some in this audience right now, and many of you are saying, well, these are mostly business leaders in this audience. I can assure you, there are people in this audience right now that need our help and our support. I am here for you. This community is here for you. I know I have seen the effects on the dark side of this, but I have also seen what is coming. I have seen the technology that it's going to allow us to get ahead of this problem for the first time. And I know that it may seem dark for you, and it may seem hard, but the bravest thing that you can do is ask for help. And so for all of you in attendance today as business leaders around the state, I challenge you 
to keep an open mind and not to judge. We're not going to judge these folks that need help. We're going to embrace them because it's the only way that we're going to solve this problem. And we will solve this problem, not because we want to, but because we have to. Thank you very much. Thank <clears throat> you.